Katie Meets the Impressionists by James Mayhew It was Grandma's birthday, and for a special treat, she had taken Katie to the art gallery. Katie loved the gallery, because you never knew what you were going to see there. Look at the flowers in the paintings, said Grandma. I can only see blobs, said Katie. The pictures are made up of blobs, said Grandma. But when you stand well back, the blobs make a picture. Katie wandered off into the next room to try. There she saw a painting called The Luncheon by Claude Monet. And when she stood back, Katie could see a garden. Grandma would love flowers like those for her birthday, she thought. She closed her eyes and sniffed. She was sure she could smell the flowers. And when Katie opened her eyes, there she was, amongst the daisies, hollyhocks, roses and sunflowers. Can I pick some flowers? said Katie to a little boy who was called Jean. Jean called his mother and nanny over and spoke to them in French. Un bouquet? said his mother. Oui, Jean. You go and help the girl. So Jean and Katie gathered flowers together. Are you going to paint them? he asked. No, they're for my grandma, said Katie. Papa paints flowers, said Jean. I'll show you. Jean took Katie to a room full of pictures, like a small gallery. This is Papa's studio, he said. He's a famous painter called Claude Monet. I'm good at painting, said Katie. Let's have a go. They mixed the paint on palettes with brushes and found canvases to paint on. They painted portraits of each other using blobs, just like rail painters. Now I've better get back to Grandma, said Katie, and they went out into the garden. Will you come another day? asked Jean. I'll try, said Katie. She picked up the, brun the bunch of flowers and, waving goodbye, climbed through the frame into the gallery. Katie saw that the bunch of flowers was beginning to wilt. What I need is some water, she said, looking around the gallery. She saw a painting called A Girl with a Watering Can by Pierre-Auguste Renoir. Katie looked around her to make sure no one was watching her and climbed inside. Can I have some water for my flowers? said Katie. The little girl put the flowers into her watering can. Voila! she said. But the flowers still drooped and flopped over. Come and pick some more, said the girl. So Katie and the girl trampled through the garden picking flowers. Katie pretended it was a jungle and that she was a panther chasing the girl. Suddenly, there was a terrible scream. It was the girl's mother. You ruined my garden, she shouted. It wasn't me, said the girl. It was her, and she pointed at Katie. Come here, you naughty child, said the mother. But Katie ran for the picture frame and leapt into the gallery, leaving the flowers scattered behind her. Katie sighed. She didn't dare go back to fetch the flowers. She went to look at the other pictures. There were a lot of pictures by Miss, Mr. Monet. Katie looked at one called A Field with Poppies. Wasn't that Jean, the painter's son, walking through the field? Katie climbed in to see. It was Jean. He was delighted to see her. We're going on a picnic, he said, and Jean's mother said that Katie could join them. They walked together through the poppy field, looking for somewhere to sit. Jean helped Katie gather armfuls of poppies for Grandma. Afterwards, they sat in the shade of the tree, the perfect place for a picnic. Mrs. Monet opened a bag. She had bread and cheese and strawberries. But Jean heard a buzzing noise and looked up. A black cloud of bees was flying towards them. They're after my puppies, shouted Katie, her mouth full of strawberries. Jean and his mother ran towards the poppy field. 
but Katie ran to the picture frame and dived into the gallery. The bees followed Katie, who ran on and on until she reached a window. She flung it open and threw the poppies out. The bees flew after them. Katie panted until she got her breath back. She still didn't have any flowers for Grandma. She saw another picture by Pierre-Auguste Renoir. It showed a girl at the theatre and was called Her First Evening Out. This girl was holding a posy of flowers. Grandma would love a posy like that, said Katie, before jumping into the picture. May I have your flowers? asked Katie. I'll swap my hair ribbon. Hush, said the girl. The ballet is about to begin. Katie looked for a seat, but they were all full. The theatre manager appeared. Mademoiselle, may I see your ticket? he said. Katie didn't have one, so she ran off down some steps. She could hear the manager coming after her, so she opened a door to hide. On the other side, people in colourful costumes shouted at Katie, so she ran away from them, towards some bright lights and the sound of music. Katie pushed past heavy velvet curtains and found herself on stage. The dancers held their breath. So did the musicians in the orchestra. So did the audience. What was Katie going to do? Katie danced. The music started up again and Katie pranced all around the stage. How the audience loved her. They had never seen anyone dance so strangely before. They cheered and clapped and threw flowers. Hundreds of flowers fell upon Katie as she twirled around. Well done, they shouted. Bravo! When the music stopped, Katie curtsied and gathered up her flowers. The manager rushed over to her. My dear, you have such talent! Katie blushed. I just jumped around a bit, really, she said. You must dance every night. You will be famous, said the manager. Thanks, but it's Grandma's birthday, said Katie. I must get back. But Katie could not find her way to the picture frame. There were people everywhere changing costumes. She was afraid she might be stuck in the theatre picture forever. All of a sudden, she saw another pic frame. I must be in another picture, said Katie. She gathered up her bouquet and climbed into the gallery. Katie looked back at the picture. The Blue Dancers by Edgar Degas, she read. I wonder if I would have been painted if I had stayed still long enough, she said. Then Katie ran over to her grandma and gave her the flowers. Happy birthday, grandma. Oh, I say, said grandma. Wherever did you get these lovely flowers? Katie just laughed. But what was that in her pocket? It was a paintbrush. Mr. Money will need that, she thought. She ran back to the first picture, left the brush on the frame, and then ran to catch up with her grandma. Chapter 3